Hey, it's CrossFitTracking.com here with take two for the Polar Unite review. I posted a review yesterday at the point of release when it was just announced and realized that some of the features that were displaying in the Polar Flow app actually went away after I removed the Polar Ignite I was comparing it against. So I have to actually update this because there's a couple of key significant changes. So if you saw the first review, my apologies. Um, again, we're tracking this for CrossFit training, not for running, not for swimming. So looking at it just to get into the summary and then I'll point out what the differences are. So this is the same casing size as the Polar Ignite. It's 43, a little bit over 43 millimeters wide and it's 11 millimeters thick. Um, so the Polar Ignite is listed at 8.5 millimeters, but if you include the heart rate sensor bubble on the back, it's actually 11 millimeters as well, or about the same. Um, the watch itself, just the watch, not counting the band, all bands being equal, is 19 grams. So you can compare that to the Polar Ignite, which is 21 grams, so it's about 10% lighter, but you could also compare that to the Polar Grit, which the watch itself is 44 grams, so it's way lighter, and then, you know, so on and so on. This uses a AMOLED-like screen design, so it's not exactly, they have some sort of technical term for the type of screen, but it's like AMOLED, it's not transflective, it's not always on, you have to do a wrist raise to get the gesture, but it is super brilliant, super bright. Um, so if you were to compare this to some of the baseline watches that Polar offers, um, this is putting off about 60 lumens, uh, of brightness and the Polar Grit and the Vantage V are putting off between 15 and 17 lumens. So it's about four times brighter than those watches and specifically with the Grit and the Vantage V and the Vantage M, the, there's two different versions of the backlight. There's the full backlight with 15 to 17. There's the wrist raised backlight, which puts off about one lumen, barely visible. Um, so super bright, super clear, super crisp. One of the things that is nice about this versus the Ignite, I'll do some side-by-side -side comparisons because they're similar and I want to make sure everybody understands the differences and then I might re-release the full review of the Ignite versus the Unite. But one of the things that's nice about this, it includes a little bit better processor of some type because when you're going from screen to screen, um, you know, when you're going from like an inner screen going into like a menu and then coming back out of it, the processor is a little faster and the screen responsiveness is a little faster. It is actually not using Gorilla Glass on the crystal though. So it is, I, my guess, because it's coming in at $149 and that's the price, it's a little bit uh, not as solid of a glass protector. They use some other type, I can't remember what the name of it is, but it's not Gorilla Glass um, on the screen, but maybe that's helping with the swipes and the, you know, changing of screens. It is using a different connector. So this is the connector that's now with the Grid X. It snaps in place and plugs directly into USB versus the standard circular connector that was on every previous watch that Polar has right now in their current lineup. I'll show you all these things. And then, you know, the basic thing I want to do today is show you, you know, tell you what it does, show you what it does in a hands-on, and then tell you what I think about it. So I'm just going to go through a little more quickly. Um, so it has, the heart rate sensor is the same color scheme as the Grit X just came out. It's using 10 diodes. So I'll see if I can get it to activate, but the way that uh, they work as Polar has a perimeter of diodes and two in the middle and all the previous ones on the Vantage V, Vantage M and Ignite uses a green and red around the perimeter and then one green in the middle counting nine total. This uses the Grit's, Grit X format which is orange and red around the perimeter and a green and a red in the middle. So 10 diodes totally activated so we can see those right there. They only last for one second. Um, it does have something interesting in that it has a haptic feedback when you're moving between screens. So as you swipe between a screen, you'll get a buzz as you feel it transitioning, which I actually like. It's got a good haptic feedback, a good vibration. Um, the battery life is rated at four days. You compare that to the Ignite, which is rated at five days. Haven't really tested, or I have tested it, but I'm gonna give you the details at the end. It uses a different band system. So instead of having a buckle type band, a lot of people had a hard time with the Polar Ignite buckle. Um, but I thought it was fine, but this uses a snap and slide buckle system. It still uses a 22 or I'm sorry, a 20 millimeter interchangeable quick release. So you can change it out. They do give you two bands with the included case. Um, so you get a small and a large, so you don't have to go out and buy another band and the band texture is really nice. And we'll look at that in a second in the close up. Um, 
that's the basic summary for what it has on the outside. <clears throat> the things that come in inside of it, it includes FitSpark, which is a general recommendation for types of workouts you could do, whether it's cardio or mobility. And that FitSpark will relate to your internal wellness or your nightly recharge. So the FitSpark will change. If you got terrible nights of sleep in a row, it'll give you recommendations for a lighter workout. And if you did a hard workout in the morning, it'll give you a recommendation for like a mobility or stretching. So if you are, you know, a CrossFitter and you do a hard workout, you could also do a mobility workout straight from the wrist where it'll show you different movements and walk you through a pattern. You can set a timer and it'll give you like a 20 minute mobility um, workout, which is great, but it's based on your wellness too. So that's helpful. It does have a fitness test built into this, which will estimate your VO2 max. What you do though, is you don't go for a run like you would with Garmin's watches. You lay down and it tracks your heart rate variability over a period of time and tells you an overall fitness level. It has breathing built into it. I don't tend to use that a whole lot. Um, I look more for the workout and the training metrics. It does do activity tracking, which is a combination of how much in general the watch has felt you moving around coupled with your number of steps. So it's not just stairs, or I'm sorry, it's not just steps tracking. Um, so I thought, I think it's a good measure. It's based on your, your input of your activity level, whether you're hitting 100% for somebody at your activity level should be hitting for that day. It does not include a barometric altimeter. And big thing is it does not include GPS. It's not as big of a factor for people doing CrossFit because we tend to not track 400 meters in the middle of a wad um, or middle of a AMRAP or something like that. We don't track the exact distances. We know the distances and we're just, you know, looking at our, you know, times per round or something like that. Um, so it, the, one of the big things that Polar highlights and features is that it includes nightly recharge. So nightly recharge is a combination of sleep and that culminates in a sleep score and an autonomic nervous system score. The autonomic nervous system score is based on the, the gap in time between beats to beat, the heart rate variability over time, and the breathing rate. So Garmin will track your respiration rate, but Polar actually ties it into a stat that's compared to a moving average, which compares to a score for the autonomic nervous uh, system recharge and it couples that with the sleep recharge and their sleep is is really you know great in the sense that they analyze a number of different aspects continuity total number of cycles the amount of time spent in REM, in REM the amount of time spent in deep sleep and light sleep and in a summary of how much sleep you got relative to moving averages and it gives you a score uh, Garmin's moving towards that direction but Polar does a great job at combining both um, they don't take the autonomic nervous system regeneration, but just for a four hour snapshot. So you're not getting your heart rate variability over the whole course of the day or over the whole course of the night. You're just getting a four hour snapshot about an hour after you've gone to sleep, but it still combines it in a nice little package. As a smartwatch, it is nice in the sense that it's, it does get notifications. You can switch between analog and digital. So that's the digital one there. It's the, the type of watch face you see. And they added something with the Unite compared to the Ignite in that you can change the colors. There's just a color choice when you go to pick digital or analog, you can change the colors, but it's just an accent color. It really just changes the, the color of the second hand or the second count. Um, and maybe some of the tweaks, like maybe when you choose something in the menu, you'll see like a green versus a red pop up with a check mark. Um, not a bunch of big differences there, but it has analog and digital. You can't change a lot of the things. Um, it has an alarm, it has a stopwatch, it has a, you know, a timer countdown. Um, and that's pretty much the summary. So let's get into a hands-on overview. I'm going to try to show you in the Polar Flow app the differences between the Unite versus the Ignite, the Polar Vantage M, the Polar Vantage V, and the Polar Grit X. The bigger thing, though, that I'll list out before I get into that is that the Unite does not include Training Load Pro. That is a big loss as a CrossFit training, and it is not going to make this a CrossFit recommended watch because you can't track your load over time. So that's the big difference in the thing that I messed up with yesterday. I was still getting the Training Load Pro in my app because the Ignite was still connected. So it was taking stats from the Unite and loading it at Training Load Pro, but if you don't have any of these other watches, you're not going to get that visibility at all. What Training Load Pro does is it evaluates how much you worked out in the last week compared to how much you worked out in the last month to see if you're pushing yourself above your normal average or your longer term average to see if your fitness is being pushed to improve. And it also gives you a cardio load score for the workout. So how much exertion went in. What this does 
is it, you know, I mean, in workouts itself, it will track 120 different profiles. So all the profiles are still available and it really is just tracking heart rate and movement. And if you have certain, you know, types of workouts, it'll track other stats. With that, to back up a little bit with the GPS, it does not include GPS built in, but you can connect the GPS with your watch and get still get running stats and biking stats, just pace stats. Um, so it will track to the, use the GPS in your watch. Um, but it does not include the cardio load and the training load and the perceived load. So all the aspects that flow into Training Load Pro, which will track your progress and growth over time, plus give you an exertion score. So what this does in a workout is it'll track your heart rate and show you how much your heart rate were, what zones you were in. And then it'll also track um, your, your basic exertion estimate it just sort of says that was a mild workout it'll tell you a recovery time but it so far has been off from what i've been tracking on a garmin as i compare these head to head so it'll it'll give you an estimate for recovery time and it'll track your heart rate and say if it was like a mild medium or hard workout um, but it doesn't give you more than that we'll look at that in the app but that is the biggest difference that's why i have to redo this whole video is the unite doesn't include training load pro and it, it was showing up because i still had another device connected to it but that is a big loss because that is a primary aspect for crossfit training so this more compares in my opinion to a fitbit charge 3 or charge 4 or any of like the samsung watches or even like an apple watch in the sense that it's just sort of tracking your heart rate over time of a workout and not tracking your training and development over time. Big, big difference. Let's get into the hands-on, then we'll come back with a summary. One thing I forgot to mention is this whole YouTube channel and website a link to it or associated with it is all based on CrossFit training. Um, you'll see a lot of videos for running and biking and triathlons and devices and how they work for those. But this is focused on CrossFit training and if you like this video and like videos like it, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. I'm really trying to build a subscriber base um, just to get to a more solid following so that I can reach out to companies and get the chance to test other devices. And subscriber basis really makes a big difference in being able to contend for that. Again, like this whole training load pro thing that I'm mentioning is absent from this device, hasn't been listed on any of the primary uh review sites. It hasn't been at least very obvious. So it's a significant difference and it does affect your training program and really affects whether it's viable as a CrossFit training device. So please consider liking and please consider subscribing. Again, let's get into the hands-on video and go on from there. the hands-on. We're going to dive through some of this relatively quickly. Um, here's the casing, 43 millimeters by 11 millimeters thick. Um, it has just a single button on the side. Everything else is just through a touch screen. You can slide. You feel a haptic feedback every time you slide between the screens. Um, the bezel seems to be metal. The back is plastic. And you can see the heart rate sensors there. You can see the orange and red around the outside with the green and red in the middle. That's the new Precision Prime. Comparing to uh, the Polar Ignite, you can see that the Polar Ignite has a raised heart rate sensor as well as raised um, uh, watch arm bars. So that's the difference there. This one just sort of sits flush with the wrist. It obviously is a 20 millimeter quick release and does have this new buckle system where you sort of you snap it in place and then slide the belt in. I found it to be just fine. It snaps in place a little bit more, you know, difficult a little difficult at first. The texture, um, it loosens up over time. The texture of the band is great. The feel of the band is great. So everything seems to be great in the design. Obviously 19 grams for the watch itself, so it's considerably light. Um, so going into the screens, this is just one of the main screens, the nightly recharge. You click on the screen to go into the details and it'll give you the breakdown of the sleep. So this is one thing that's great about Polar watches is you get all the details on the watch itself. You can see just the difference uh, vari variations of stats across the autonomic nervous system recharge. I do like that they take your breathing rate and they compare it to averages to give you some sort of value. Garmin will track your breathing rate, but breathing rate, but it doesn't summarize into anything of benefit. Um, you can go into the sleep details and get your sleep score as well as all the stats for the night of sleep that you had. Um, I like that it shows sleep cycles and it'll give you a percentage of REM sleep, deep sleep, and light sleep, and it'll give you the times in the app itself. Um, 
So going through the next screen, you can see a red dot on the bottom. That means there's notifications. You swipe up and you get your notifications and you can swipe down to make them go away. Um, this is the FitSpark page. You go in here and it'll give you a recommendation based on your night's sleep and your overall, how much training you've been doing. Um, to give you a recommendation, you can obviously click in more. You can do another cardio long workout. You can go into a core workout. You can go into mobility workout. When you click into any of these and scroll down, it'll actually show you the motions. And then when you start the timer, it'll tell you what to do and, you know, how much time to do it for. So it gives you great recommendations on the FitSpark. Here's just a basic um, watch face which just has the date itself. You have your activity tab, which you click into that. It's just how many steps you've gone and just general active time. I like this better than just tracking your step goal. It's more of an activity goal that you set up when you initially set up the watch, how active of a person you are. Current heart rate, you know, nothing specific here, but it does give you your lowest your resting heart rate while sleeping versus just throughout the day and then your training log so you can go into any of these training log sessions i just did a brief walk because as i said in the video had the ignite connected to the ecosystem and it was giving me a training load um, whereas when i took it out all the training load stuff disappeared so you can see in the workout from a you know, a couple of days ago, you get the heart rate specifics. You do get a cardio load score here. It just doesn't appear in the app anywhere and doesn't apply to training load with just the Unite. So that's sort of a bummer. You got the heart rate zones and your calories burned. Um, I did that workout while still having the Ignite connected to the Polar Ecosystem. So I wondered if it was going to um, take away the cardio load, but just went on a five minute walk and the cardio load is still displayed here. Um, obviously not much of a load on this one, but that's your workout log. So you're at least able to see the cardio load per workout. So an evaluation of the exertion in the watch itself, but nowhere on the, um, operating system. So then we're back here, you go into settings, you can start your training again. You know, if you are using something that's connected to GPS, it'll start looking for your phone, it'll slowly find it. And when it's connected to the phone, GPS circles it in green and you can, you're off to the races with getting your pace and distance. You can load up to 120 different workout option choices here. Um, then you go into the next one, you have breathing. You can do the breathing sessions, timers, to just stopwatch and countdown. I like it because for intermittent fasting, you can do a certain period of time countdown. The fitness test, you just lay down. It'll give you a VO2 max just from laying down for three minutes. And it's somewhat similar to Garmin's results. This is the last result a while back. I don't do it relatively consistently enough um, because it's just not tied into a workout like with Garmin. You go on a half mile run and you'll get a VO2 max score for that. But this does it a little bit more easily. In the settings, like I was saying, that there's a general change to the colorization. So obviously you can choose between digital and analog. This is just one of the minor tweaks with the Unite over the Ignite. So you go in to pick your choice of type and you can choose your color highlight, which will appear in minor ways. So it does not make a significant difference, but it does appear as a second hand. Um, throughout each of the screens, that's where your accent color appears. You can obviously swipe down. There's no alarm set. You can lock it and you can turn on do not disturb. You can also set do not disturb to do a period of time. Um, so that's the summary of the watch in itself. Um, if you look at the app, you know, there's a few basic things about the app that are similar for all the Polar. This is one thing that is a benefit over Fitbit, over some of the other devices, is that it's a true sports training app. We're just missing that training load um, with Unite. So that's a uh, somewhat of a loss there. But first main page is your activity page. It gives you the summary of details. It takes an estimate of your mile, you know, the distance walked through your steps, um, like a pedometer almost. Um, active time is just how much movement around and how much calories you burn from the movement. This obviously ties in workouts if you had a workout in, in process, as well as there's the percentage bar like we saw on the watch. Um, you can see your heart rate throughout the day. It'll track your highs and your lows throughout the day as your resting heart rate during your sleep, which is helpful. And you can track these things according to your weekly activity and your monthly activity. It just takes a second to assess, you know, the monthly activity. But, um, and then obviously we're in a new month. This is 
your sleep app, it goes through that same summary of information we had on the watch and gives you the score, all of the details specifically here. You can see at the top here how much time you spent in each stage. And if you wanted to look at your overall progress throughout a week, you can see how you did. And you, obviously when you have a bad night's sleep, um, you know, you get a low score of 68, and I'll show you how that looks on the nightly recharge. So that's just the basic sleep summary. And then the nightly recharge gives you a summary of how much, you know, regeneration occurred overnight by taking into account the ANS, the Autonomic Nervous System Recharge, um, which is that four hour block. Again, tragically, it's not the whole night, but it's the four hours, like basically an hour after you've fallen asleep to track your heart rate, your beat to beat intervals, your heart rate variability and your breathing rate over that period of time to determine if there was a lot of healthy rejuvenation. And then there's the same screen, so you can go directly into it. So if you were to want to see, so if you have a great night's sleep, it just says go for it. It'll give you little tips for the day. This was an okay night's sleep. It sort of says you're awake like a lot last night. We had a power outage in the middle of the night, so it was spot on for that. And then a bad night. This is when I stayed up late and woke up early because I was traveling. It tells you you got to watch your energy level for the day, try to regulate them, get some better sleep, take a rest day if you need to because of my nightly recharge was so poor um, for that night. So it does give you some good wellness tips related to your rejuvenation overnight. And then here's the training log, the weekly summary. You can see all of your just your basic training log details, but it's better to look at it almost week at a glance. Here's the same workout, you know, using two different watches because I was still testing with the um, Ignite to sort of do it alongside it. It gives you this training benefit, so it just sort of shows you mild. And you click into it, and it just shows you that mild. It says, you know, you have about a five-hour um, recovery time. Now, that wasn't really accurate, but a lot of the heart rate tracking wasn't really accurate either. So there was, you know, some issues there. Um, one thing I will say about the heart rate tracking before I get into the summary, because I think I might have left it out of the summary, but the heart rate tracking I'm finding just to be relatively inaccurate when compared to a chest strap. I'm actually finding the new color of the diodes on the back of the watch, the orange and red, to be somewhat less accurate than the green and red for me and my skin color. I don't know what exactly goes into it, but um, the heart rate tracking is not tracking uh, super accurate for CrossFit workouts. So like here's this, here's a workout specifically where there was three rounds for time on the initial phase and then three rounds of bent over rows. So the rounds for time on the initial phase was like hollow rocks as well as single leg Romanian deadlifts. And then three rounds for time for uh, three position bent over rows. And then this section here, ironically, was a... 75, you know, dumbbell snatches for time. Didn't catch that at all. And then this last phase that actually captured some of it was intervals on an assault bike. But if you were to compare that to how it looked on the actual, an actual um, chest strap. So you have three rounds here where the hollow rocks and the single leg Romanian deadlifts. You have three rounds here, three position bent over rows. And then you have a continuous spike here, which was the dumbbell snatches for time, 75 dumbbell snatches for time. And then you have the assault bike capturing each of the intervals really uh, relatively nicely. But if you look, it's it's got 144 average heart rate. And in the peak zone here in the red, Peak zone, eight minutes and 22 seconds, and you compare that to what you got here. Um, your average heart rate was 128 Bennett beats per minute, so that was somewhat of a felt difference from 144. It only captured four minutes in the peak zone, but it really didn't capture a lot of the peak areas, so it's not giving me a correct assessment. Now, built into the Unite, the big drawback is that normally on this screen, if you're using the um, Ignite, Vantage B, Vantage M, and Grid X, you would have a training plan here. It would tell you if you're productive, if you're underproductive, if you're detraining, if you're overreaching, and you would better click into that and see the summary of your workouts alongside an estimate for um, how your last week of workouts exertion level wise compared to the last 28 days if you're increasing your fitness. So this is completely missing that main mid piece, as well as you don't get the Training Load Pro built into the middle here, where it would show you 
um, what your cardio level was and how it relates to your training. So a lot of that is missing. Now you just get this training benefit of mild. And even if you go back and look at previous um, workouts, it just gives you this training benefit of mild. So again, versus the Ignite, even the Ignite, um, when I took it off of the system, it took away the training benefit stats and details and just turned it into like a training benefit of steady state plus. Um, so it misses a lot of the crucial pieces for CrossFit because of that. But this is where you find the basic summary of your training pages, and that's where you get to each of the screens. So that's the summary of the Polar Unite, and I'll give it. I'll give you a you know a direct summary in a second here. Thanks so, so much. What is the big main difference between the Ignite? I mean the Unite and the Ignite with the app itself. So same main landing page, same sleep, same nightly recharge different training. So like we saw in the video for the Unite, the cardio load training metric was gone. So obviously it just looked like this where you just had the schedule, but you didn't get this cardio load. And what you do is you click into that and you can see your training history over time, as well as the estimate for your strain over the last seven days, how many, like what your average workout is put placed strain wise on your body and your tolerance over the last 28 days and one divided by the other determines if you're maintaining or if you're productive, productive, detraining. So you can see it over time here as well as you can see it on a beautiful graph here. So this is all missing from the Unite. So this training plan is only in the Ignite as well as obviously the Vantage V, Vantage M and Grit. But um, that is the main difference in what you get when you get the Ignite over the Unite. So that's a big primary difference in what you experience on the app itself. So again, all the same other screens, but just a different training plan because you don't get training load pro or cardio load built into your estimate. The cardio load is specifically with each workout, how does it evaluate the impact on your um, physical fitness, the strain that you placed your body on, as well as the calculation for the training load pro. So that's the basic summary of the differences there and how it would be different on the Unite versus the Ignite, the Ignite including these pieces. Okay, so looking at the summary of the watch, we saw sort of the, a lot of the details of it. I think it is a beautiful watch. I've always liked the Ignite, uh, the color screen on the Ignite because it's more brilliant and vibrant than any other watch that's out there on the sports tracking and training field. Um, the biggest, challenges here so the, let's let's go with the pros it's super lightweight 19 grams barely feel it um the like we showed the heart rate sensor is flush with the watch so it fits more comfortably the band that it comes with is very comfortable uh the casing's comfortable um the fast faster screen processor and a more functionally um smooth screen changes through the touch screen is more function is helpful um but it doesn't give you what you could need in training and development. Um, so that's one of the big cons. There's just a few cons. And just to make sure I don't miss it, um, on the battery life, it's estimated four days. I'm really getting between two and a half and three days. So it's you know really got about a 33 to 35, sometimes 37% burn rate on the battery per day. So a little bit less there. That's not necessarily a con, but it is different from the stated amount or stated value. Um, what are the big cons? Well, the primary con is it doesn't include Training Load Pro, so we can't get our stats for our development and training. Plus, we don't get an exertion score, which is that cardio load score um, for how hard you push yourself in a workout. You just get sort of a slight training benefit, mild or steady state or something like that, but it doesn't give you a real evaluation, which takes it out of the running for being a true CrossFit tracking watch. Um, the other con is the notifications. So you know, like I said, or like you, you might know that the notifications, obviously this is a wrist raise gesture, turn on the screen type of thing, but the notifications don't auto appear. So if you get a notification, it does not populate the screen and turn the screen on. And you have to like do a wrist raise gesture to get the screen to turn on, and then your notification will appear. And if you don't do the wrist raise gesture within a certain number of seconds, the wrist, the notification won't appear and you have to swipe up from the bottom. Um, 
The other big problem besides just the difficulty to read the notification is I'm only getting notifications about 50% of the time. So for some reason, it's just not syncing. And then all of a sudden, I'll get four notifications at once that were posting a notification that was received 28 minutes ago. So it doesn't have, there's something in Polar's engineering and design that connects with an iPhone in this situation. So I am using an iPhone that is not syncing up correctly. Um, so it's not just receiving the notifications in a continuous manner. Plus you have to do the excellent, you know, um, wrist raise. So that's the basic summary for $149. If you compare this to some of the other offerings, like a Fitbit, um, type of watch, because it does compare more directly with that. I don't really care if it doesn't include GPS. So the Fitbit charge four includes GPS. But to me, it just gives the sort of a generic summary of stats on an ugly screen. So I, I think this is like a million times better than the Fitbit Charge 4, plus it's on Polar's ecosystem. So it includes a brilliant screen with a bunch of recommendations, a very excellent um, sleep evaluation. Fitbit does use Pulse Ox in comparing it, but I still think the stats that they show on the Polar are like way better because you don't get that in that in-depth ability to see within the stats that are culminating to a score or to an estimation of regeneration. So I think it crushes the Charge 4, crushes the Charge 3. Um, I think it compares more directly, similar to the Garmin Venue, although the Venue has music and has some other benefits to it, has more customization has a more, as an always on screen, has more um, stability to the notifications and the operating system as well. Plus just, you can do million watch faces and widgets and things like that. So it doesn't really compare directly head to head, but as far as tracking your workouts, having a sports base profile, it does compare to the venue. Um, and then it obviously could compare to like an Apple Watch-ish. Obviously, Apple Watch does a million other things into a Samsung. So that's how it compares to some of the other watches that are out there. But this is $149, so a really cheap price point on Polar's ecosystem, which is great. Super bummer for training load pro and cardio load to be out there. So I do not recommend this as like an effective CrossFit training device. But as a standalone device, it is um, a very well-designed device outside of the things that I mentioned. Thanks so much for watching CrossFitTracking.com.